Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing some liquid aquarium nails. I am so, so, so excited for this. I am going to be doing super, super long nails, the longest nails I have ever done. I did get a couple of things from Amazon, which I will be showing in a minute here, but I am going to be doing a winter holiday themed liquid nail set. I have tried liquid nail sets and they are so much fun. I feel like today's video is more of like a fun type video, just kind of experimenting with nail products and doing something that is definitely out of my comfort zone. First of all, these nail tips that I purchased from Amazon, they are so long. They are like the length of one of my fingers. It was insane, but I had so much fun doing this nail set. I definitely do want to do another like liquid aquarium nail set though, doing it more on like a Christmas holiday theme, like maybe more red and green colors. And for that nail set, I am thinking about doing a lot of a shorter nail. I feel like most of the liquid and aquarium nails I've done, um, I think I've only, this is my third nail set, but all of them have been super long. This one specifically, this one is going to be so long, but I do want to do a shorter length and kind of experiment with that and see how that will run out. So if you do want to see that, let me know down below in the comment section. I do really want to do that. Also, be sure you are giving the video a thumbs up. That way I know you enjoy watching this type of content. But yes, today we're doing a little bit more of an experimental type video, having fun with it, getting super creative. I know a lot of comments are probably going to say, I would never be able to wear these long nails. And I totally agree. When I put these nails on, I could not function. But just doing it, having fun with it, and having these nails forever just as a memory that I did them, that is really what this video is all about. Just kind of having fun with it and doing something, kind of putting myself to a challenge. So both of the things that I showed in the beginning, the little syringes and the nail tips here, these are both from Amazon. I did purchase them and I will leave them linked down below in the description box. These nail tips are full cover 5XL nail tips and just look at this length. Absolutely insane. The longest nail tips I own. I could not believe when I put it on my finger. I was just so surprised the length again. It is just insane and I just knew these were going to be awesome liquid nails. I was just so excited to start and dive right in. With these being super long though, this nail set did take me forever to complete. It took me two days to do this nail set and I had so much fun every step of the way. I really enjoyed the final outcome too, but this is definitely one of those nail sets that I was sitting at my nail desk and I was sitting there and then I decided to quit for the day and then jump back on it the next day. As you can tell, even by the length of this video, it is a quite it is quite longer than most of my other videos. But I'm just going to be jumping right in here. Um, the nail tip length for my thumb, I did want to cut it down just a little bit. I wanted these nails in specific though because I wanted to do super long nails. So for the rest of them, I am just cutting off the number on the nail just to kind of cut the nail down just a teensy weensy little bit. Like I said, I purchased these nail tips from Amazon because I wanted super long nail tips. So I didn't really want to cut anything too much. The next thing that I'm going to be doing here is marking my natural nail. I'm just using a Sharpie to do this and this is just going to act as a guide for me because I am going to be creating like gel extension, full cover, press on aquarium nails. So I just want to mark where I should stop the actual like tank part of the nail. That way when I go to apply it onto my natural nails, I have enough space and none of the gel product or the actual like aquarium tank is pushing up into my natural nail. So I just marked that with a Sharpie for my reference. And now I am going in with a hand file and I am just going to be filing these nails. 
When doing the method that I'm doing today, I have found that filing the underside of the nail tip really helps a lot with keeping the gel attached to the actual nail tip. So I did file the free edge of all of the nails just to crisp up the free edge, make sure everything was straight, and then I flipped the nail over and on the underside. I'm just taking that hand file and going over top of it and really just getting in there and filing the sides of the nail. That way when I place the nail down into the gel and I cure it, the gel is going to adhere a lot better and it's going to stick properly to the nail tip. For each of the nails, I also did go in with a dust brush and try to remove as much nail dust as I could. I feel like dust with aquarium nails, it gets super hectic and hard to do. I feel like a little bit of dust won't hurt because, of course, if you're applying glitters or adding in glitters, you're not really going to notice the dust or see the dust. So you could take a lint-free wipe, wipe out the dust, but all I did was just took a little dust brush and went in there and tried to remove as much dust as I possibly could. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I have a silicone mat, and then I also have a non-wipe, which you really need a non-wipe rhinestone gel or glue gel and just make sure that it is non-wipe because you don't want it to have a sticky or tacky layer especially with this method if you're going to be pressing the nails into the gel to create your tank for of course like the liquid and the glitters you want to make sure that it is a non-wipe product because if you are using a product product that leaves a sticky or a tacky layer, the glitters are going to stick inside the actual like tank that you're building. And then the glitters aren't going to move around because of that sticky and tacky layer. Something, if you do not have a non-wipe, you could use something that does have a sticky and tacky layer. But you will have to keep in mind that you'll have to go in and rinse the nail tip out. I just don't really like doing that. I get a little bit worried that I might miss a spot and then a bunch of glitters will stick up in there. So I just find it easier using a non-wipe top coat. Or no, I apologize, a non-wipe rhinestone gel. Of course, you can also use something like a glue gel. Just I would think it would need to be at least a little bit of a thicker. It's going to like cure hard. But I also go in with some extra steps, which you'll see in a minute here. But I just poured some of that um, rhinestone gel out on my silicone palette and then I used a brush to just move all of the gel out, get a very smooth surface. That was so satisfying to do by the way. But I just did that and then now I'm taking the nail tips and placing them down into the gel. I am pressing lightly just to make sure all of the sides are down into the gel and I don't have any empty spaces. This is actually very easy to do even though it may look challenging because you may like think like oh no am I going to have an empty spot but don't worry if you're pressing the nail tip down you should be totally fine. The sides of the nail tip usually just stick right into the gel and you don't have anything to worry about. But I did press all four of the nail tips down and then I did use a flashlight to do a flash cure on the nails. Just kind of making sure again all the nail tip sides are fully down into the gel because I don't want any gaps. Because this is going to act as the seal for the pretty much the entire like tank where we're going to be filling it up with the glitters and the oil. Once I was finished with the flash cure, I did do a full 60 second cure in my nail lamp just to ensure the gel was fully cured and I didn't have any uncured gel. Once everything was cured, I am now just removing the nail tips from the silicone mat. This is also a very satisfying process. I am very gentle when doing this though because I don't want anything to break but it comes off super easy. You can see all of the nail tips are attached. I'm now just taking a pair of scissors and I am going to cut off any of the remaining gel. I will also cut the nail tips like apart from each other and then I will get super close to the nail tip sides and the free edge and just make sure I don't have any hanging gel, like any remaining gel that I don't want. I do just want this like gel to be on the bottom of the nail tip if that makes sense. So I've been talking a lot so I'm just going to go ahead and let this part play out. I feel like it is very easy to follow 
and then I will hop back on for the next step. Something I did forget to mention, but when I do file the underside and then it comes to removing any of the remaining gel on the sides, I feel like it does come off very easily. Some pieces, it just like chips right off. Super easy to come off because I did file the underside and the gel that is attached to the actual nail tip, it sticks so nicely and then any gel that isn't attached, it does just come right off. So this is kind of a step I like to do just to ensure that my nail tip is going to be fully sealed. I'm not going to have any leaks. Something that always turned me away from trying like liquid aquarium nails was me thinking that I wasn't going to be able to get a proper seal and when it came time to applying my glitters or my oil, everything was going to create a huge mess and I feel like these two steps here just really help me feel a little bit better, especially when it comes to filing and shaping the nail, just because I know I have a little bit more strength on the actual tank part of the nail. So I am using the Kiara Sky Builder Gel and also the Kiara Sky Non-Wipe Top Coat. And I'm just going in and applying it to the underside where I applied the Non-Wipe Glue Gel. I also take it up on the sides of the nail again just to ensure that I have a really good seal. Everything is sealed up tightly. I will cure that for 30 seconds in the nail lamp and then because the Builder Gel Builder Gel does have a sticky layer. I will go in with a layer of no wipe top coat over top all of the areas where I applied the Builder Gel. This also just ensures another layer of gel on the nail, just making it a little bit stronger. Do keep in mind when you do apply these two extra layers of gel, you are making the nail tip a bit heavier, especially with this length of nail. These nails were very heavy, but I feel like with me just adding these two extra layers, it does really help a lot, especially without getting any leaks when you do go in with filing or even when you put your oil in. I just feel like it really helps me out a lot. And of course, if you're doing shorter nails, the nails are going to be heavier because you are adding extra like gel to them. You're putting glitter and oil in them. So I feel like overall, if you want the aquarium nails, the liquid nail look, you're going to have a little bit of heavier nails in general. And if you are going to be wearing them long term, I would recommend going in with the extra layers of gel just to ensure that you really have a good seal. Um, this just talking about this makes me want to do short liquid nails so bad. So definitely make sure you are letting me know. I would love to try it out. Have you guys ever tried short aquarium nails? I feel like most of them that I've seen have been very long nails. I mean, like the nail length I'm doing here or a little bit shorter. I don't think I've ever seen a more realistic length of doing like liquid nails. So I definitely want to try that, see if it works. I mean, the only thing that I can think of is maybe there wouldn't be that much room for movement, seeing the glitters move around or anything like that. But I feel like you would still be able to see that there is liquid and glitter in the nails. 
either way, I am now moving on to the next steps here. Once I did have the layer of builder and the top coat applied, I did go in and just wipe off the Sharpie mark that I added on the top of the nail. I just used some rubbing alcohol and a lint-free wipe to do that. Now I am going in with the first seal on the nail. This is all a personal preference on what end you want to seal first, what, the end that I'm sealing here, so the one closer to the nail bed or the free edge of the nail. It's all just a personal preference. I honestly find it easier and neater to seal the end that I'm sealing here, but also I find when I do seal up the free edge part of the nail first, I have a bigger opening to add in the glitters and the oil. So again, just try it out if you're trying these nails. See whatever method works best for you. I did just use some of that non-wipe rhinestone gel to add on a little seal. I flash cured and then I also popped it into the nail lamp and did a full 60 second cure. Now that I have everything sealed up on the actual like tank part of the nail, I just have one opening which will allow me to add in my oil and all of my glitters and sequins. For my oil, I am just using a thin cuticle oil. I would say that this cuticle oil is very thin compared to maybe like the Kiara Sky, the rose scent cuticle oil that I use. It is more of a thicker cuticle oil. I feel personally it would more than likely be better to use a thinner cuticle oil just because I feel like it would move around a lot easier in the nail. Again, it's all kind of just trial and error. I've never tried a thicker cuticle oil. That's kind of just my thought process though and why I choose to use a thinner cuticle oil. I did get the little syringes from Amazon. They are absolutely perfect. They fit right into the nail, makes filling up the nail a lot easier. So I did just try and put some into, I believe it was my pinky, I'm not 100% sure. One of the nails I put some oil in, I did check for any leaks, and then I was ready to fill up the nail. I did forget to show all of the glitters that I pulled out. I pulled out some snowflake sequins, a bunch of glitters from Kiara Sky. I also have these little, um, I forget what they're called, pixie crystals, I believe that's the name for those. And I just pulled out a bunch of different glitters that I thought I wanted to use. I kind of wanted to go on like a winter wonderland theme of like blue snowflake sequins and then also having some iridescent glitters and then adding in um, pink and purple just to give it a little bit of a girly vibe to it. So the nail that I'm working on here, I did go in with the cuticle oil. I believe, yes, this is my pinky, and this was the worst one out of the nail set. Now, don't get me wrong, I still loved how it looked, but because the pinky was so tiny, I had such a hard time trying to fit glitters in. I feel like maybe the next time I do my pinky, I should do the other method where I seal the free edge and then it keep the like near the natural nail area, that part of the nail open because trying to fit in glitters and sequins in the nail, it was just so challenging. There is barely any glitters in the pinky just because I could not fit anything. The hole was just so tiny and I was struggling so much so I kind of did give up on this one just because I knew it was just going to take me forever to try to get glitters in there and at least I had some in there. So I did just finish up that one. I wiped the free edge off with a lint-free wipe and then I did seal it up using that same non-wipe rhinestone gel. I did do a flash cure and then I popped it into my larger nail lamp to do a full 60 second cure. For the rest of the nails, I will be repeating the same process. I do start by filling the nail with cuticle oil just to make sure I don't have any leaks. Um, I feel like honestly, that's the best way to do it. Fill your nail up with a little bit of cuticle oil, check for any leaks, and then start going in with your glitters because if you have any leaks and then you're filling up your glitters and then you put in your cuticle oil, it's just going to be a bigger mess in my opinion. So that's the reason why I do go in with cuticle oil first. And I didn't have any leaks. 
Um, definitely a success. I was super happy. I thought that I was going to have one just because the length of the nails. I thought I was going to miss a spot or something, but I was so proud that I did not have any leaks. And that kind of just goes to show that when I first, like the trend of like liquid aquarium nails was going around, I was so afraid to try it because I did not want to have a like huge mess with glitters everywhere. I mean, doing these nails, it's already a pretty big mess because all of the glitters, but having like a leak and then your oil coming out everywhere, it would just be so annoying. And I was so afraid to try them. And I'm sure a lot of you are like that as well. But if you want to try it, I 100% recommend it. I have so much fun anytime I do these types of nails. You can also get super creative with it. There is also a lot, a lot of different methods that you can try um, building different like tanks. And there's also like, I think, pre-made aquarium nails if I'm thinking correctly. So definitely try it out. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. A lot of other videos up on YouTube as well. I would say I'm not a professional with these types of nails. I just have a lot of fun experimenting with them and I feel like in the end result they don't always come out the best but I do always still see the liquid in the nails, the glitters, the movement. So honestly, I just want to give myself a pat on the back and tell you all that I am very proud. And if you've been scared to try these types of nails, definitely go out and try it. You will be very, very amazed with the outcome. But like I said, all of the nails, I'm doing the same thing, just using the glitters and the sequins that I pulled out and filling up the nail. I also want to say that the syringe that I purchased from Amazon, it was a lot longer and easier to help me push down the glitters. So every time I put the syringe in the nail, it doesn't mean that I'm filling it more with cuticle oil. I know that can get like a little like you don't know if I'm putting in cuticle oil or not, but most of the time when I'm putting in the syringe, I am just using it to push down all of the glitters and the sequins. That way I have a little bit more room at the top of the nail and it just makes things a lot easier. So I think that I'm just gonna go ahead and let the rest of this play out just because I don't wanna keep talking. I just wanna let you all sit back and enjoy it. One thing I do wanna apologize for is that when I was doing this, I was very focused and I wasn't really looking at my phone to see if I was in frame or in focus. So if I do go out of focus, I am seeing that it's focusing a little bit more on the glitters versus the nail that I'm actually working on. I also see sometimes I get a little bit closer to the edge of the screen, so I do just apologize for that. I feel like overall you can still watch and see everything that's going on, so it's really not that big of a deal, but I did just want to mention that. Like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and let the rest of this play out and then I will come back once I move on to the next step. But I really hope that you all are enjoying today's video. If you are enjoying and haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe. I do have a giveaway planned when I reach 25,000 subscribers and we are super close. You guys definitely don't want to miss out on this giveaway, so make sure you subscribe. Also, give the video a like. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're feeling generous, leave a comment below.
Now that I have all of the nails completely sealed, filled with oil and glitter, I am now going to be doing my filing and buffing. I did do my thumbnail off camera, but this part is the scariest part of everything, is filing and buffing. Once you have finished the nail, pretty much, you have all your oil, your glitter in there. It is so scary to go over and file and buff because you don't want to open anything but I am so proud of myself because I didn't open anything. I didn't have any leaks. So something I will say is just keep a very light hand with this. I feel like when you are doing this style of nail, it is very hard to get the most perfect nail shape just because of the seal and the like shape of the nail having the tank. So don't really focus too much about the shape. Just kind of do a little bit of light filing, try to perfect the shape, but remember not to keep filing and filing in the same area or you are going to cause a leak. So I just took my hand file, did some very light filing to the free edge, the sides of the nail, and then I also took a buffer and just buffed the top surface of each of the nails. Once I was all finished with filing and buffing, I did take a dust brush to remove all of the nail dust. I am going to be doing a little bit of nail art on these nails just to kind of cover any imperfections. So using the gel pods, the blue and the purple, I did mix both of those colors with the white gel pod just to get a lighter blue and a lighter purple. And then I also am using the Kiara Sky nail art brushes. And I am going to be making these more of press-ons. So at this point in time, if you do want to apply these nails doing the gel extension method or using gel to apply these nails, you will want to apply them to your nails first before going in with any nail art. I decided that it would probably just be cleaner and easier if I would create them more as a press-on where I did the nail art nail art first and then when I went to apply them I just used a regular air dry glue. It is all just again personal preference whatever you want to do whatever will work best for you but I'm going in here with my nail art and this is just to hide anything like the nail bed area where it doesn't have any liquid. You could go on the sides of the nail if you want to clean them up a little bit and also the tip of the nail where I have the seal for the free edge, I do like to go in there and just add on a little bit of gel polish. So I use the blue to cover the nail bed area and then the purple, I'm just going in underneath of that with a line and then also taking a little bit of that purple gel at the tip of the nail just to kind of hide that area as well. This was super easy to do and very quick. I didn't show all of the nails just because the footage for this video was very, very long and I did have to speed some things up, cut some things out just because I didn't want to have like an hour long video. I mean, this video is already at 41 minutes long. So I did have to cut a couple things out, but you can really do any nail art that you want. You can also even do a French tip. You don't necessarily just have to hide the area of like where your natural nail is going to be. A French tip would also look really nice. You can outline the nail. There is a lot of different things that you can do. I mean, the possibilities are only honestly endless, but I just went in with something very simple. 
adding some purple and blue because I did add in blue and purple glitter so I thought those colors would match really nicely and just kind of hiding any imperfections. Once I had the gel on all of the nails, oh by the way, each nail I did cure for 30 seconds in the nail lamp. I am now just taking a lint-free wipe with some rubbing alcohol and wiping the sticky layer off because I am going to be going in with some white snowflake stickers, just adding a couple of these to each of the nails. I will also be taking a white gel polish and a dotting tool just to go around the snowflakes and add on some dots to act as snow. Once I was finished with the stickers and the nail art, I'm now going in with the non-wipe top coat and I am just going to be applying a layer of this to all of the nails and curing for 30 seconds. Honestly, applying this top coat was a very satisfying part in this nail set. Just seeing the buffed surface become shiny, seeing all of the glitters, it was just so beautiful and these nails were really just coming to life. I did apply these nails off camera, like I said, I did just apply them using an air dry nail glue, basically like press-ons. I did apply my peel off base coat because I do want to remove these nails and save them because they were a lot of hard work and I absolutely love how they turned out. But I did just apply them, I'm now going in with my cuticle oil, applying that to my cuticles to nourish them. And of course, like I always say, top off the nail set. And I absolutely love these nails, even though the length is absolutely insane. I would never be able to function with these nails. Like, I don't know, if you would be able to wear this nail length, that is like crazy. I was like feeling so weird wearing them. I actually pet my dogs with them on and they really liked it, but I don't think that I would be able to survive with these nails picking things up, even typing. I mean like editing my videos, I don't think I would ever be able to do it. But I do really love them. I also had just like a fun creative time experimenting with everything and you did see me covering like the actual like glitter parts of the nail. That is a more realistic nail length for me especially with everything that I do. But these again so much fun. You can definitely see the movement. I feel like in person it is a lot better. It is also a lot better with the nails off of my natural nails just because I can move them around in different ways and kind of shake them like a snow globe and I feel like it's just a little bit easier to notice it when they're off my hands or even seeing the movement in person. I just feel like it is a little bit better versus picking up the movement on camera. For the nails, I tried not to add air bubbles. A few of the nails do have very small air bubbles in them. I will say though, my thumb is my favorite. Even though it does have an air bubble, I just love the movement in that nail. I love all of the glitters that I added, the color, like the amounts of different color that I added in the thumb. I think the thumb is my favorite. Overall, these nails turned out super cute. I, is, I was so excited with this nail set. It also was snowing when I took the outside shots for this nail set. So I was so happy with that. A very nice wintry background with very fun wintry snow globe liquid nails. 
Let me know down below in the comments section if you guys have ever tried liquid nails. They are so much fun. Also look at them in low lighting. All of these glitters, it definitely makes a disco ball. But I really hope you all did enjoy today's video. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time.